I'm sure that many of you have at least seen or heard of the app data folder in Windows, probably while trying to find a configuration file for some program, maybe to change an advanced setting. But there are multiple cryptically named directories in app data, and sometimes what you're looking for is in the roaming folder, sometimes local, or even the local low folder. But what's the point of these different folders anyway, and how is app data related to the program data folder you may have also seen elsewhere? Well, I don't know. I guess you'll just have to keep on wondering. Just kidding, obviously, we will be solving the mystery in this video, and even if you know what app data is, we're also going to talk about other cool stuff you probably don't know. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to lightly tap the like button and subscribe for future videos. First of all, what is the app data folder anyway? Well, each Windows user has their own, and it's located in C, user, name, and then app data. It's a hidden folder, so you'll need to enable hidden items to see it, which is easy enough to toggle in Windows Explorer at the top under the View ribbon. Now, ignoring these subfolders inside it for a minute, simply put, app data is for storing extra data that programs use or create that aren't part of the original installation files. So basically, when you install a program, usually all the files required to actually run it go into program files directory, which most people are familiar with, and then stuff like configuration files, temporary files, file caches, whatever else goes into app data. Technically, this doesn't always have to be the case, but we'll get to that later. One thing you might be wondering is why not just use the program files directory where the program is installed and keep all the settings and files together in one place? Well, there are advantages to keeping it separated. First, remember each user on a Windows PC gets their own app data folder. If you're installing a program, it can be easier to manage multiple user settings this way because you can just install it once into program files and then those files for actually running the program stay the same. But if a user changes their preferences, those customizations can be stored in each user's own app data directory. It's also more secure because users can't access another user's app data folder. So no one can mess with your files or settings for that program. Also, permissions are different for the user directory and the program files directory. App data is within each user's personal directory, so they have access to that. But program files is higher up, right at the top level directory, because it has programs meant to be used for all users. But only someone with admin privileges can write to program files. So if settings were stored there, users might run into permission issues if they aren't admins. So instead, it makes way more sense to just keep everyone's settings in their own folder. That being said, there are some exceptions and nuances to this, so let me elaborate. You see, technically, a developer could choose to not even use app data and just put all user settings in the install directory if they really wanted to. I'm not aware of any advantages of doing this, but maybe if the program requires admin privileges anyway or something. I'll also point out that sometimes entire programs can be installed right into app data. So not just the settings, but the whole program. This can be good if you only want to install the program for one user, but not everyone. Occasionally, app data will be the default install directory for certain programs, but but usually it will either just go into program files or ask the user which. And fun fact, if you've ever had a program ask you if you want to install for all users or just me, this is what it's asking. If you want to install to program files and be accessible to all users or your individual app data folder. See, it's all starting to come together now. So going forward, if you're trying to find where a program is installed and can't find it in program files, don't be surprised if it's in the app data folder somewhere. Okay, so now we know what the app data directory is for in general, but what about those three subfolders, local, local low, and roaming? Well, all three folders basically do hold the same types of files, user specified files and settings, preferences, some temporary stuff, whatever. But each folder serves a slightly different purpose, but only sometimes. So first, let's go over local and roaming, since those are the most commonly used. The local folder is the most basic, and it's called local because it's meant for files that just stay on that particular computer. Though it's easier to understand when you compare it to the roaming folder, which is meant for files that potentially need to follow the user in a domain environment, and that's the key. This could probably be a whole video itself, but simply put, a Windows domain is where lots of computers are centrally managed, like for a company or school. The organization creates a set of common rules and policies which are applied to all computers in that domain, and then users get accounts created that 
can usually work on all computers as part of that domain. These computers are also typically locked down and the users don't have admin privileges, so they might not be able to install stuff, for example. But users are able to access their account on not just one, but many computers, again, like in a school or company. So going back, the roaming folder's purpose is to store app data that will be synced and accessible to a user no matter what computer on the domain they're logged into. If you're given a personally assigned laptop, theoretically, the files in the roaming folder should also show up if you log into a desktop at work or computer lab or whatever. The local folder, on the other hand, is just the opposite. Those files do not follow you and stay on that computer. So now the names probably make more sense. Roaming is for files that roam around different computers and local is just local to that one computer. Now, I know many of you are thinking, wait a second, my computer is just mine. It's not part of any work or school domain and I'm the admin. So why do I still have a roaming folder being used with stuff in it? Well, the roaming folder still exists, even if you are not part of a domain. It just houses files that would be synced if you were a user on a domain. But if you aren't, the roaming and local folders do exactly the same thing. But that still leaves some questions. If they do the same thing, why do programs use local while others use roaming, or even both at the same time, even if users are not in a domain? Well, it's basically for compatibility and consistency. If a program is designed to correctly put roaming files into the roaming folder, whether a user is in a domain or not, that means it will work in both scenarios no matter what. This also ensures that files will have the same file path no matter the environment, which also means that any documentation about the program and the locations of files will always be consistent, for example. Next question, what or who actually determines what goes into each folder? And that is completely up to the developer. If you're looking for the settings folder for a specific program, there's basically no way to know whether they got put in local or roaming without looking. The developer might not care about settings getting synced and just put it in local. Other developers may figure and eh, just put it in roaming, why not? More confusingly, some developers may use both folders for one program. For example, Adobe here, there are lots of program folders in both. Photoshop, Camera Raw, probably more in both roaming and local. I will also point out that sometimes, for example, large files will specifically be put into local, even if it would be ideal if it could be synced, because they'd just be slower to sync across the domain and other stuff like that, where it would definitely be better to just keep it local. So basically, there's no hard rule for which folder a program will use, so you just gotta check both. And actually, many programs don't even use app data and may just put settings and stuff in the user documents directory. A lot of video games do this with save files because they know users are more likely to know to look in the documents folder than the hidden app data one. All right, so now onto the third folder in app data, local low. This one is actually the same as local, but with the so-called low integrity level. Now, Windows integrity levels could also probably be an entire video. Basically though, integrity level means the trustworthiness or privilege of an object or program. There are several different levels. Low is very restricted in which files and folders it can access and write to. Medium is regular user rights. High is admin privileges. And system integrity level is like root. It can do everything. But there are two others, which are untrusted, which is even under low, and installer, which is a special one and beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, each level can only access stuff in its own level and lower. So certain higher risk programs will run as low integrity to ensure more security because it highly restricts what files and folders it can access. For example, web browsers may run in low or even untrusted. So if the program or something it downloads is infected, it's isolated to specifically designated low integrity folders. And actually using the Process Explorer program, you can see the integrity level of different running programs. And you can see that most of Google Chrome, for example, is running in untrusted. And like I mentioned, yep, the local low folder is designated as low integrity. So low integrity programs can only write into there, which keeps it from the rest of the more trusted files. But wait, there is one more folder that is related to app data, which is program data. Unlike app data, which is in each user's directory, program data is actually stored in the top level of the drive, just like program files. Specifically, it's found at C program data. If you go into it, you'll see even more settings folders for programs and some we already saw in both local and roaming already. I mean, seriously, another one? But alas, program data does actually serve a purpose. It's for program data and files that, again, aren't part of the base installation, but also are not user specific, but rather stuff that's for all users 
users. So there's no sense in putting them in only one user directory. So basically program data is for resources that will be used by the program and shared by all users. For example, a program might download a dictionary file that it can use no matter what user is logged in and it isn't something an individual user will change. So it goes into program data or maybe an antivirus program will do a scan and put the results log in program data so the results are accessible no matter who's logged in, stuff like that. Another fun fact, in Windows XP, program data used to be the directory C documents and settings all users application data. And these days, if you try to go to C users all users, it will just redirect you to program data. And if a program tries to write to all users, which doesn't actually exist anymore, it will just also write it and redirect it into program data instead. So that's just for backwards compatibility with old programs made for XP. Now there's one final thing you might be wondering. If you're already familiar with Windows, you might know that the shortcut for app data is percent app data percent. If you type that into the start menu, it takes you right to it but actually it goes to the roaming folder. Why is that? Well, supposedly the roaming folder is usually considered the default. A developer can choose which to use, but apparently the common practice is to just use roaming unless you have a reason to use local. There's also a variable for local too, but it's percent local app data percent. And I'm not aware of one for the local low folder though. The reason there's no shortcut to the top app data folder is that no program should ever write in there and always needs to go into one of those subfolders anyway. So now you should be an expert on what all those weird folders are for. Again, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for new videos each week. If you guys wanna keep watching, check out my video on why some websites start with www1 or www2 instead of just www. That link is right there. You can just click on it. So thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.